Welcome to Safe and Sound, sponsored by White Mountain Fire and Life Safety. I am your host, Kirk Webb, and today on the show we have Becky Moffitt, who is an outpatient educator. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I know we've kind of known each other for quite a few many years now, right? Correct. And uh, in fact, uh, your husband uh, was my family doctor at one point working, and so, but I wanted to get you on the show for because we want to talk about diabetes awareness. November is Diabetes Awareness Month. Yes, it is. And tell me a little bit about what it is that you do there at Summit. All right, well, I see outpatients. So those are the people who are walking on the street and healthy. And I'm, I'm an educator, as you said. So my job is to, to help people figure out how to eat healthier and take better care of their diabetes and to prevent diabetes, if that's the case. I um, enjoy what I do. I've been there a good 25 years. And so in my role as a dietitian and a diabetes educator, um, I do a wide variety of things. I did bring some visual aids <laughs> I, today. I see that. It looks like a whole lot of, I, I can recognize some plumbing stuff there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, Kind of to start to preface this whole conversation, um, is there an issue with diabetes up here on the mountain? Definitely, most definitely. I remember when we first started teaching self-management training, it was probably 15 years ago. Um, I thought eventually we're just gonna run out of people to teach because we're teaching several classes every week and it's ongoing for years, the classes a set of classes is like five, 10 hours, it's five weeks. And um, we have never run out of patients. In fact, we have a stack of referrals. There's a lot of, a lot of diabetes. It just comes with our, our lifestyle these days. It comes with our, with what they like to call obesogenic environment, all the wonderful food that we have to eat and the lack of physical activity. It's just our lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Life has just become very busy. Um, fast food is very easy to get to, especially with a busy lifestyle. So all of these things are, they, they feed into that issue of, in, in fact, we were kind of talking a little bit before we got started, um, pre-diabetes. Yes. I, I would like to preface and say that there is a genetic component for diabetes. We all know people who do everything correctly, quote unquote, you know, eating healthy, they, their weight is just perfect and they're, they exercise and they still get diabetes. And on the other hand, we know people who eat just only junk food and, and are couch potatoes and they don't get diabetes. There is a genetic component too. And there are um, type one and type two diabetes, which are completely different. Um, over 95% of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes, which has a huge lifestyle component to it. So you asked about prediabetes, and that it's just a big, long continuum. We used to call it borderline diabetes, and um, it just means you're approaching and, and use it as a wake-up call. But right. the vast, vast majority of people... Um, probably two-thirds of the population have prediabetes, and most don't even realize it. I, I think I kind of fall into that category. I know my... I do. <laughs> uh, the A1C and all those different, mm -hmm. you know, which mm -hmm. I don't know what those terms exactly mean other than, um, you know, when I go for my annual physical, they say, well, man, you're, you're kind of you're right on that borderline. And it's creeping up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got to watch your diet and, or, or got to exercise more, all those different things. And, 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 yes. and you're right. There's, there's so many things that you may be able to do to get that to change, and there may be nothing that you can do. Right. I'd say probably 50% of people with prediabetes can prevent it. And those who maybe can't prevent diabetes, they can slow it down, they can lessen its impact by their lifestyle changes. Right. And, and I'm actually been listening to other things 
on on different levels of different kinds of health issues mm -hmm. of um, some medications they're finding out that are beneficial to a certain person some medications make it worse and especially dealing with depression and things like that but mm -hmm. but i think all of that kind of all ties together in a in a roundabout way doesn't it yeah diabetes is a blood vessel disease most people think of it as just a sugar and diet disease but it's really a blood vessel disease i have these um, blood vessels here this one is normal blood sugar and this is a blood sugar that is um, high, maybe around 200 blood it's, sugar. It's this a is 100. Bit sluggish. It's there. sluggish, and you it does you are tired, and also hungry because things aren't moving when you have high blood sugar. It's a little syrupy, actually, and and of course. So is this, it making your blood thicker? A little bit is that thicker. Kinda... <laughs> yes, it's not has nothing to do with. Um, Viscosity clotting. or, or yeah. clotting, okay. But it, but it definitely is, is a, little, a little thicker. And I forgot where I was going with that. Well, because well, sugar is not always a bad thing. Our body needs that to create sure. the fuel to give us the energy. And so we, we need a certain amount, but now do we have too much or too little? Yes, and so people say, oh, I can't have sugar, I can't have carbohydrates, but it is our body's preferred source of fuel, and our bodies need sugar. The problem with, with diabetes is the sugar is in the blood, and it's not getting out of the blood and into the cells where we need it. And this is my favorite toy, <laughs> and it represents a cell, a cell in your body, any cell, your lung, your, your brain, your heart muscle, anything. And to get sugar or glucose out of your blood into your cell, it takes insulin. So here's insulin. Insulin's the key. And it kind of picks it up like a taxi driver and puts it in. Well, as we get older, it gets harder. And as we gain weight, it, get, it gets harder. And, um, and so instead of one key, your body kind of has to make like a whole handful of them to get the sugar in. And so losing just 5% of your body weight really opens it. Physical activity is like WD-40. It just opens it. So there are things you can do. To, and, of course, the diet is what makes the sugar go up in your blood. But the exercise is what gets it out. Um, any questions about that? So, so it's kind of a combination of you have to have everything in the right um, sequence or kind of like the right com uh, I'm sorry I'm not helping you here <laughs> <laughs> that's okay um, but I mean it, you, you have to have you know because if you have too much insulin what does it do and if you don't so because yeah. you're saying the key uh, is the right balance yeah right. it's everything has to be in the right proportion that was the word I was looking for the proportion, proportion. yes <laughs> so so here's a healthy pancreas it's enormous but <laughs> that has this many cells that produce insulin to get the sugar down out of your blood and into your cells. Sugar and glucose, I use the words interchangeably, they um, are energy to our body. They, you know, it's fuel. Well, when someone is diagnosed with diabetes, they only have this many cells left that produce insulin. And so instead of, like I was showing you here, instead of making a whole handful of insulin, it's like it can't do the handful anymore and it can only do a little bit. And so then the sugar creeps up. And so it is, it is a balancing act and getting, and getting it right. Um, at, when you lose these, when you lose all these cells, they don't usually come back. That's the unfortunate thing. So, so, so it's not a regeneration that. type thing, like, like these not. video games, you, 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 you die and, <laughs> and, and you yeah. can't uh, come back <laughs> to life again. Nope, nope, so. nope, you can't. So um, another thing that goes wrong with your body with diabetes is it acts like a drippy faucet making glucose. And so it's normal for your blood sugar to go down when you sleep all night and not eat. And so your liver makes glucose to bring it back up. And um, with diabetes, it doesn't get the message to stop making glucose. And so it's, there's nothing wrong with your liver. It's doing its job just fine. It's just dripping sugar out. And so you'll, some people will wake up in the morning with a higher blood sugar than they went to bed. And a lot of people don't understand that. So I wanted to 
bring that up. So many things. Diabetes, there are medications, like you're saying, for different things. Some make your cells more sensitive to the insulin, so you don't need as much. Some um, work on the liver and kidneys not to make some. The newest medications work on the gut hormones that talk to your pancreas that make insulin, um, and they help with appetite and weight loss. And there's also um, the new, a new set of medicines that make you urinate out extra sugar. Like normally, if your blood sugar is over 200, there's sugar in your urine. Well, now with these medicines, the threshold's 100, a blood sugar of 100. And so it actually helps people lose weight and it seems to be heart protective and everything. So we're excited about these new medications. And, and, and that's kind of the one thing about the world of medicine and, and being a doctor and all that kind of, it, it, there's, there's always new technology and new stuff coming out. And, and well, technology with diabetes is amazing, yeah. you know, with the insulin pumps and the continuous glucose monitors to check people's blood sugar. And right. in, in fact, we like to use time in range. So, so your blood sugar, you know, you want it to be between 80 and 130, 140. And after you eat, maybe 160, 180. If you're, it's more important to be able to see how much time you're in that, in that range you want to be, the target range. Because when you poke your finger, it's just a moment in time. It could be up and down, you know, it's right. constantly changing. And so um, the new technology is helping people so much. So it's actually getting a more complete, bigger picture yes. rather than just a Polaroid snapshot. Yeah, and, it, and you don't have to poke your finger as often. You still have right. to poke it now and then. But it's something that you wear. It's a sensor. And, and it will and come. In fact, they re go back to watches and things like that, right? Yeah. So you can always know what your blood sugar is doing. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It makes, it's made all the difference for a lot of people with diabetes. And, it really has. And the whole goal with trying to maintain a, a balanced um, glucose level is for longevity of life, right? Yeah, and quality of life, too. Because um, when being a blood vessel disease, if you ignore your diabetes or if you're in denial and the high blood sugar, it causes damage down the road. Neuropathy is the big one with your feet, you know, pain and numbness, but kidneys, eyes, heart, heart's the number one complication. Right. And so, yeah, you want a better quality of life. Um, we really encourage people to be educated about diabetes, which empowers you. Because, you know, when you break your arm, you have to go to the doctor, the doctor has to take care of it. With diabetes, you live with it every day. You can't wait till your next doctor's appointment to make a change. You need to understand what the numbers mean. You need to know what you can do about it and what questions to ask and what might be influencing your blood sugars. Right, so part of your education, um, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking that you probably see some people that two or three times going through the system mm -hmm. because one, things have changed within their lifestyle. Yes. Um, maybe things have happened in their family. Um, mm -hmm. it, Cause so outside influences not only affects your, your mental and, and emotional health, but it affects just, just typical body functions yeah. too, doesn't it? And in addition to that, diabetes progresses or at different, rates with different people. Some right. people it barely gets worse and others it really can. So, yes. Um, so part of your education, what all does that include as far as when you're working with somebody on these? So it depends. You know, it depends on the person's needs, of course. Um, I work with two other diabetes educators. I focus on the diet, being the dietitian, and and exercise and, and some weight loss, that kind of thing. Um, one coworker, her specialty really and her love is teaching people insulin pumps, insulin dosing, and um, using the technology, the continuous glucose monitors. And, and my other coworker is teaching our diabetes self-management training classes. And she is a wonderful educator. 
and that's so she's teach she teaches more um, like if someone's pregnant with diabetes she she will work with them and um, I know I'm speaking in generalities and you you were kind of wanting to know more how we do it but we use these visuals we you know, right but uh, but as far them. as like um, um, when you're when you're dealing with somebody that's just brand new coming in and and maybe their doctor said that they need to go right to insulin. I mean, I don't know if that's the case or sometimes, not. Sometimes, sometimes um, it is. And, and, and I think it's all a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. So so you pretty much have to, uh, do, do you have an intake process that you gotta go through all this? Well, we, we need a referral from the doctor. Um, Summit requires that. Um, we look at their A1C. This is a red blood cell. A1C is hemoglobin A1C. And this is a hemoglobin, red blood cell. And as it floats around in your blood, it picks up glucose, as you can see. And um, the A1C is a percentage of how much sugar is on there. And so the red blood cell's half-life is two to three months. And so when you get your A1C, it's an average of your blood sugar the last two to three months. Gotcha. More, more heavily weighted more recently. And so we, we talk with them about that. We explain what the numbers mean, what the blood sugar targets should be. Um, I don't know. Um, what else do we do? I, I get like a food history, a diet history. Um, and I like to start where people are at, not, you know, overhaul everything. In the classes, the self-management training, we, we, go, we review all the medication options, the pros and cons of each medication. And um, of course, cost is a big factor. Um, but we, we um, work with people individually as far as what would help them the best. Uh, we talk about preventing complications of diabetes. We explain what insulin means and you know all these new words carbohydrates and everything right and and probably stuff that they're they may be familiar with but right in, in sound only in some cases or right. yeah, um, i've heard that before yeah. <laughs> but uh um in, in um in with that referral from the doctor they're probably giving you what we've already tried from that doctor mm -hmm. we, we can patient. see what they're on their, their history their their medications and what their blood sugars are running and, and, and other issues too. I mean, I look at the whole person. Often there's some high cholesterol or high blood pressure. And I mean, fortunately, what's healthy for one is healthy for another. People always think, ah, for diet. I, I, I'm so, I, have a, I have diabetes and I have heart disease. Well, guess what? What's healthy for one is healthy for the other. And so use it as a wake up call just to eat healthy. But we all like to eat our favorite junk food and. So I work with people as far as moderation and working it in so you don't feel guilty. Right, not saying cut all of this out. Right. And, and it's just, and it, the biggest thing is probably being that lifestyle change. It's hard, it's hard. And so I, I have people set small baby step goals that are very specific. What are you gonna work on? You know, and then, then the accountability factor and report back, how are you doing with that, so. Right, and you know, and you know, as far as you know, that healthy diet, and I know they've changed some of the terminology over the years, and oh yeah, and it's like like there was four main food groups. Do we still have that, or has it changed <laughs> completely? You know what or, I do is this plate, and a lot of people have seen it. A lot, all the school children, I'm sure, have seen it. But this healthy plate is it talks about the ratio of foods. And so half this plate is vegetables, a fourth of it is starch, and a fourth of it is protein. And that is ideal for blood pressure, for heart disease, for diabetes, for just about everyone. So, so where'd the ice cream go on all this? You, you know, know? <laughs> the, the milk's over here, and I guess the ice cream could be, you know. Just a little yeah, itty bitty yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> enjoy it, eat it with a baby spoon, savor it. But yeah, veg. I feel like a broken record sometimes. We can't get enough fruits and vegetables. I don't know anyone who gets too much, and, too and many fruits yeah, and vegetables. Yeah, and I've I've heard you know some medical professionals say fruits are really not that good because they're high in sugars. But they are good. In fact, two fruits a day will help prevent diabetes.
Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. kind of going back to that, an apple a day keeps, yes, keeps, keeps the doctor, the doctor away. away. The fiber, high fiber seems to really help. Um, fiber will slow down the absorption so your blood sugar doesn't spike up. That, I'm sure I'm simplifying it. There's probably more to it than that, but um, well, and, fruit and, is good. And I think, like, I know in my case, keeping things simple is always best. Yeah, to <laughs> me, I can just visualize this. You know, this morning I, I had a starch and a milk and nothing else. So then I thought, oh, when I got hungry again, I should have a piece of fruit or a vegetable. You know, I, I need to keep that ratio, but it's easy to remember it in your head rather than counting everything. Sometimes people have to count their carbohydrates, and a lot of people who are trying to lose weight will count, and, and that's fine. It's definitely helpful, but not everyone needs to do that. Well, and, and you know, and I'm not been a huge person on dieting, as you can obviously tell here. <laughs> Me neither. But, <laughs> um, but can going from diet to diet to diet cause issues with, you know, a different um, type of... Not really, not really. Um, a lot of people are lifelong dieters. They've, they've been trying to lose weight their whole lives. And yes, it does affect their metabolism, but they probably have a slow metabolism to begin with to have a weight issue. Um, but any, any diet will work. Um, studies show that it doesn't have to be low fat or high fat or low carb or high carb. It just, it's calories and whatever works for you. And even if you lose weight and gain it back, which most of us do, losing that weight is still beneficial. Right. So, so, so I would say don't beat yourself up if you've been on lots of diets. Yeah. Well, and I, and I kind of think, you know, as I'm, as we're sitting here talking, I, my mind keeps going back to a little bit of education that I've had with um, being a car seat tech. It, you know, if we install the car seat for the parent or guardian, caregiver, it's good for that one time, maybe a little bit longer, but eventually that car seat's going to get loose. Or So, yeah. so you got to train and educate that parent guardian caregiver to yeah. be able to install it for themselves and so then from then on they're doing it right because they now understand and, and understand the mechanics and everything else behind that why we want that child to be safe yes understanding the mechanics and understanding the why makes such a difference and it's it's teaching a man to fish rather than giving him a fish. Right. And that's for sure with And, the, with and that's this. always, yeah, any kind of education program, yeah. I'm sure that, and, and it's different with everybody, just like how many different car seats are out there. <laughs> and each one is slightly different than the next one, and they have different weight limits, all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to kind of look at yourself, and I, I like what you said, moderation, and um, what works for you. Yeah. And, Some yeah. people really love carbohydrates and others are fine with just as long as they get their meat. Mm -hmm. And and so you have to know, um, for instance, I'm not against a ketogenic diet, but it's a very difficult diet. And it also is, you know, is that something you're willing to do the rest of your life? Because it, it will always come back. Um, so I see more modified Atkins type where it's lots of protein or, or just a Mediterranean style diet where you're getting lots of produce. Right. And, and I kind of like my, my best friend growing up in high school, my cousin, um, he, ever, he always refused to eat any kind of salads because I am not a rabbit. <laughs> you know, and I kind of like get over it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, and yeah, and there's so, so there's times that we may have to just like, OK, if I want to be healthy, I've got to look at, you know, but I don't have to do everything exactly by the book because no. what, what works for Becky doesn't work for Kirk. Exactly. Exactly. And I actually work with people this morning. I met with a gentleman who. Um, he lives alone, he's a widower, and he needed some just quick and easy healthy ideas. You know, what can he cook? He's not going to go to a lot of trouble for just one person. And, you know, he didn't want to do more than one day of leftovers. And, and so 
So I just help people find quick and easy, you know, do you like baby carrots? Well, that might be something you can keep on hand or some grape tomatoes or, you know, we just come up with some suggestions and things that will practical practical application of what we're talking about. Yeah, it's funny because when you mentioned that, I, I can remember when, because I'm in the tail end of my brothers and sisters, you oh, know. Oh, okay, and, yeah. And, and so mom, she made these big, huge meals because we had a big family. And then she still didn't know how to tone it down a little bit. And so <laughs> in her fridge was always full. And some of this stuff started, I guess maybe that's how we got our penicillin. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, you, you just got to, you know, look and see what works for you. Yeah, what... I mean, because there's all these ideal things you'll see on Pinterest or you'll Google and there's all these wonderful, beautiful meals and even I get overwhelmed. It's like, I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time for this, you know. So you got to start with where, where someone is. If they love ramen and they live on ramen, you know, we talk about, well, can you use half a packet? Can you season it? Can you add some veggies to your ramen? Can you, you know, we don't get rid of what people are doing, but we try to add yeah, to it. Yeah, modify it a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough trick. thing to, <laughs> and, you know, and I think even that uh, that stress level of worrying so much about what am I going to cook for tonight and what are we going to eat for tomorrow or what do we got to buy from the store and it, it, even that stress can cause changes so, in. Stress can raise your blood sugar. <laughs> so, so that's why you exercise. But I had a gentleman um, set a goal to clean his car. And I said, why? He says, because I'm stressed with my car and it makes my blood sugar go up. So he cleaned his car. That was his goal. There you go. It's like, <laughs> find, find whatever it takes because it might be more than just diet that's causing oh, right. those health issues. Right. It could be going to bed earlier and getting up earlier so you have time to exercise or going to bed earlier so you don't snack all night. You know, there's, it's, I work with people like that and it's, yeah. it's very helpful. Well, it has been a pleasure spending a little bit of time talking over this. And I know this is something important that, you know, and, and I think everybody gets affected by this at some point in their life at some point. And yeah, I, I would like people to not get a negative connotation about, oh, I've got diabetes, I can't eat this. You know, no, it's a wake-up call just to be healthy. So thank you for having me. And, and if they were to try to get with you, it's through Summit Healthcare? Yes. You can just call Summit and ask for Becky. Nice. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And once again, thank you for watching Safe and Sound, and we'll see you next month.